So what is text rap? Hip hop to you drop. No, it's not that. Text rap means you are taking text and wrapping it around an object or an image. And so uh, this layout here is an example of that. There are two different types of text wraps that I've created here. Uh, this is going around what's called a square cut image, but the text is wrapping around it. Uh, these are both outlined objects. That means the background has been removed and is transparent. And the text is able to recognize where the edges of those images are. So I will show you how to set these up, how to modify them a little bit, which you may need to at times. And uh, again, as with all this stuff, it's actually pretty simple. It's Always just remembering how to do it is the hard part. Totally, for sure. So first of all, you may be wondering what the heck this type says. Well, so do I. This is called Greeking. No way. Now, I've tried to find out uh, why it's called Greeking, and the best answer that I've heard is that there's that old expression, it's all Greek to me, and uh, so... It's all Greek to me, so that makes sense. Now, what's funny, though, is that typically Greeking looks like fake Latin. Or maybe it's real Latin. Who even knows? I don't know. Uh, well, people who speak Latin do, but I don't. Uh, so that's all well and good. Now you know what Greeking looks like and, uh, and maybe why it came to be called that. But how do you get it? Well, fortunately, InDesign makes that very easy. I'm going to go to this other file. So here are two empty text frames, and I just marked them both. And then I'm gonna go up to the Type menu and pull down to here, Fill with Placeholder Text. And that really is the best definition for Greeking. It's placeholder text, so if you don't have access to real type for some reason, so this in the context of a real job, uh, the copywriter is working on the text while you're working on the design. So you use placeholder text to show where the text will go, what the style will be, what the size will be, the letting will be, all that stuff allows you to make decisions up front without having the actual text. And so I have plugged in this fake Greek Latin, and uh, so that allows me to now style it as I want to style style it. And so here we are to the raw layout. So you'll notice that uh, there are no wraparounds here. Wraparound is another term for text wrap. We are going to do that here in this video. Also, don't fret. The ballet slipper is here. It is just off screen for the moment. So let's start off with the square cut right here. So I'm gonna click on that. Obviously that's important. Yeah. So I've imported the images. I've got them cropped just the way I want. And now I wanna tell the text to wrap around it. So mark that and then go over here to your dock to text wrap. And this is really a pretty straightforward window. So depending on which of these buttons you click will determine what controls you get access to. So this first button here basically just means no text wrap. The second one here means wrap around the bounding box. And so the bounding box is the size of the frame. Uh, this one is wrap around the object shape. So uh, InDesign will look inside at the shape and figure out where what you want the wrap to be. This one tells you to jump objects. In other words, stop above the picture and then continue on below the picture. And this one means when you get to that picture, just go ahead and go over to the next column. I don't want anything else underneath the picture. So most of the time you're gonna be dealing with these three. The default obviously is no text wrap. So this one's pretty simple. I just want to wrap around the bounding box and boom, immediately it does. Now there are some problems, like over here, the text is actually touching the picture, so you never want to do that. It makes the type very hard to read. And so down here underneath it, these are settings that allow you to adjust the gutters or the margin around the picture. So this is for the top. The top right now is working fine, so I'm gonna leave that setting alone. The bottom, the bottom is also looking pretty good, so I'm gonna leave that setting alone as well. Uh, the left we'll come back to in a minute. Really the problem here is the right, and that is because it is set to zero.
So I'm just gonna click on the up arrow until it gets to a point where I feel I have a comfortable wrap. And so you never want things to get too close. Remember, negative space is really important and it's actually really functional. If you don't have enough negative space, if things get too close together, you create a tangency that becomes a point of interest. So in other words, a distraction. So we just want to get enough white space through there so that we can be, feel comfortable, so that the eye just moves through it without getting stuck in a certain place because things are close together. And so I'm going to go up to, and about a pica is, uh, is going to work for me. Now we're in picas and points measurement system right now. So a pica is one sixth of an inch. Uh, so that's feeling pretty comfortable. Now over here, I'm realizing this over here is okay because there has already been a, a margin established of eight points. So there are 12 points in a pica and there are 72 points in an inch. I'm gonna leave this alone and then I'm gonna click away to just see this without the box. And so that's feeling pretty good. That's pretty comfortable. Now when you're doing this, you may have to adjust the size of the picture and so forth to get things to look just the way you want. So I'd already figured out the size and position of this so the text wrap uh, worked out very nicely but you'd probably have to do a little bit of adjusting okay so now the boot here and so what's different about this boot and the ballet slipper too um, let me just go over to Photoshop for a minute and you'll see that both of these images that I have removed the background it is transparent and so that is very helpful when you're doing a text wrap uh, because otherwise you might have to draw the path that you want the type to follow. But if I've gotten rid of the background, then InDesign can figure out the path on its own. So back to InDesign here. And so with the boot marked, back to the text wrap window. So if I just click on this to go around the bounding box, you know, it's not bad. Uh, that isn't gonna work for the ballet slipper for sure but it would be more interesting if it actually followed the shape a little bit. So that would be this next one here, wrap around object shape. And then you need to tell it one more thing. So you'll see you have the ability to tell it to wrap both sides or just one side. I really just need it to be on the left side, so I'm gonna choose that. And then contour options, type bounding box. So again, it's just going around the image frame. But if I drop this, I can tell it to detect edges. So if it does have a white background, InDesign can actually do pretty well going in and figuring out where the edges are gonna be. But if it's a background that isn't white, it's not gonna do as well. Um, if you have a path in Photoshop, you can have it fo follow that. Uh, if you have a clipping path in there, you can have it follow that. But I don't have any of those things, but I do have an alpha channel. So alpha channel is a highfalutin fancy word for uh -huh. transparency. So that means that InDesign can figure out where the transparency is and then see where the object is and then create the path accordingly. So I'm gonna choose that and you'll see that immediately the type follows that path. Pretty simple, right? Now it is a little bit close and that's because the margin or gutter has been set to zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that up and you'll notice I only have one setting to control. This gives you uh, an all around wraparound. Now that may, be, that may not be what you want, but I'll show you how to fix that with the, uh, with the ballet slipper. Okay, so pretty good, right? And pretty easy, right? All right! Okay, so let's get that ballet slipper in here. So I'm gonna turn the preview off for a minute. And then I just drag this straight over to the side. I'm gonna pull this in. Now, I went ahead and finished this one because this is a little more complex process. But I wanted to show you the process I went through so that you can do it if you need to. So you'll see the wraparound is working pretty nicely here, um, but it took me a little bit of work to get here. So when you make this path, or should I say when InDesign makes this path, what it actually does is draw a vector path. So you know what vector paths are. Yes, dear. You've dealt with them in Illustrator, maybe even a little bit in Photoshop. Well, this is where that knowledge of vector paths can help you in other programs. So I'm going to get my white arrow tool and I'm gonna go back to preview again to simplify the look. And then I'm gonna click on the slipper and then I'm gonna zoom in. 
And so you'll see this little blue line right here is the path that the type is following. So again, that path was automatically created by InDesign, but what's nice is if the path isn't doing exactly what you want it to do, then you can adjust the path. And so I adjusted the path in two places. I adjusted it to the top and then down here at the bottom because this line wasn't working across. So let me show you what I mean. So if I take one of these points and I pull it down, all of a sudden I get a break in my type. And so that's the kind of thing that was happening. There are also gonna be times where because you have to set the same width all the way around, it will maybe give you a little bit too much space in, in one side. So you can go in and adjust this path. And again, it's a vector path, so all of the same rules apply. You can adjust the handles, you can move the points, all of that stuff. You can even add points and subtract points. So it works just like a regular vector path. So I'm gonna undo that so that my beautiful work returns. And then I also did a little bit of adjustment up here because it was starting to affect the headline. And so that can happen as well. You can see that the initial setup of the text wrap is quite simple to do, and it maybe gets a little bit more complex if you have to go in and adjust the path. But I think you'd agree that this is a very interesting effect, and it really becomes very much a unifying element. So text wrap is something you're probably going to use in the layout project, at least a little bit, and hopefully this movie will show you the path.